Welcome back to Bible Reading with Study Guide. We are in Proverbs, and we will be finishing that with this reading. So let's get right into it. Let's see what wise sayings Solomon has to say. Proverbs 25. These also are Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. As the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the heart of king, kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from silver and it will go to the silversmith for jewelry. Take away the wicked from before the king and his throne will be established in righteousness. Do not exalt yourself in the presence of the king and do not stand in the place of the great. For it is better that he say to you, come up here, than that you should be put lower in the presence of the prince, whom your eyes have seen. Do not go hastily to court, for what will you do in the end, when your neighbor has put you to shame? Debate your case with your neighbor, and do not disclose a secret to another, lest he who hears it expose your shame and your reputation be ruined. Hmm. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver, like an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, is a wise rebuker to an obedient ear. Like the cold of snow in the time of harvest is a faithful messenger to those who send him, for he refreshes the soul of his masters. Whoever falsely boasts of giving is like clouds and wind without rain. By long forbearance, a ruler is persuaded, and a gentle tongue breaks a bone. Have you found honey? Eat only as much as you need, lest you be filled with it and vomit. <laughs> okay. Sell him set foot in your neighbor's house, lest he become weary of you and hate you. A man who bears false witness against his brother is like a club, a sword, and a sharp arrow. Confidence in an unfaithful man in the time of in time of trouble is like a bad tooth and a foot out of joint. Like one who takes away a garment in cold weather, and like vinegar on soda, is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For so you will heap coals of fire on his head, and the Lord will reward you. The north wind brings forth rain, and a backbiting tongue and angry countenance. It is better to dwell in the corner of a, a housetop than a house shared with a contentious woman. As cold water to a weary soul, so is good news from a far country. A, right, a righteous man who falters before the wicked is like a murky spring and a polluted well. It is not good to eat much honey. So to seek one's own glory is not glory. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Okay. Let's see if there's any questions in 25. What is like apples of gold? In verse 11. A word fitly spoken. So a wise word. And how should we treat an enemy? In verses 21 and 22. If he's hungry, give him something to eat. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. And you'll find those same, that same quote in Romans 12, 17 through 21. You might take time to read that. All right, Proverbs 26. As snow in summer and rain in harvest, so honor is not fitting for a fool. Like a flitting sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without cause shall not alight. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the fool's back. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. He who sends a message by the hand of a fool cuts off his own feet and drinks violence. 
Like the legs of the lame that hang limp is a proverb in the mouth of fools. Like one who binds a stone on a sling is he who gives honor to a fool. Like a thorn that goes into the hand of a drunkard is a proverb in the mouth of fools. The great God who formed everything gives the fool his hire and the transgressor his wages. As a dog returns to his own vomit soul, a fool repeats his folly. Do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. A lazy man says, there is a lion in the road. A fierce lion is in the, heart, in the streets. As a door turns on its hinges, so does the lazy man on his bed. The lazy man buries his hand in the bowl. It worries him to bring it back to his mouth. The lazy man is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can answer sensibly. He who passes by and meddles in a quarrel not his own is like one who takes a dog by the ears. Like a madman who throws firebrands, arrows, and death is a man who deceives his neighbor and says, I was only joking. Where there's no wood, the fire goes out. Where there's no tail bearer, strife ceases. As charcoal is to burn coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to, build, to kindle strife. The words of a tail bearer are like tasty trifles, and they go down into the inmost body. Fervent lips with a wicked heart are like earthenware covered with silver dross. He who hates disguises it with his lips and lays up deceit within himself. When he speaks kindly, do not believe him, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Though his hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness will be revealed before the assembly. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it, and he who rolls a stone will have it roll back on him. A lying tongue hates those who are crushed by it, and a flattering mouth works ruin. Okay, is there any questions for 26? What is gossip like in verse 22? The words of a tale bearer, a gossip, are like tasty trifles. They go down into the animal's body like tasty trifles. Listening to gossip. Getting the latest juicy tidbit on somebody, right? Okay. Proverbs 27. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Let another man praise you, and not your own mouth, a stranger, and not your own lips. A stone is heavy, and the sand is weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than both of them. Wrath is cruel, and anger a torrent, but who is able to stand before jealousy? Open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. A satisfied soul loathes the honeycomb, but to a hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Like a bird that wanders from its nest is a man who wanders from his place. Ointment and perfume delight the heart, and the sweetness of a man's friend gives delight by hearty counsel. Do not forsake your own friend or your father's friend, nor go to your brother's house in the day of your calamity. Better is a neighbor nearby than a brother far away. My son, be wise and make my heart glad that I may answer him who reproaches me. A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself. The simple pass on and are punished. Take the garment of him who is surety for a stranger and hold it in pledge when he is surety for a seductress. He who blesses his friend with a loud voice, rising early in the morning, it will be counted a curse to him. A continually dripping on a very rainy day, and a contentious woman are alike. Whoever restrains her restrains the wind, 
and grasps oil with his right hand. I guess you can't restrain the wind, can you? And you can't hold on to oil. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Whoever keeps the fig tree will eat its fruit. So he who waits on his master will be honored. As in water, face reflects face. So a man's heart reveals the man. Hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. The refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, and a man is valued by what others say of him. Though you grind a fool in a mortar with a pestle along with crushed grain, yet his foolishness will not depart from him. Be diligent to know the state of your flocks and attend to your herds, for riches are not forever, nor does a crown endure to all generations. When the hay is removed and the tender grass shows itself and the herbs of the mountains are gathered in, the lambs will provide your clothing, and the goats the price of the field. You shall have enough goat's milk for your food, for the food of your household, and the nourishment of your maidservants. Okay, that's 27. Why shouldn't we boast about tomorrow in verse 11? Verse 11? Oh, sorry. Verse 1, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. So we can plan and boast about tomorrow, but we don't know. Something may happen. Okay, Proverbs 28. The wicked flee when no one pursues, and the righteous are bold as a lion. Because of the transgression of the land, many are its princes. But by a man of understanding and knowledge, right will be prolonged. A poor man who oppresses the poor is like a driving rain which leaves no food. Those who forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. Evil men do not understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand all. Better is a poor who walks in his integrity than one perverse in his ways, though he is rich. Whoever keeps the law is a discerning son, but a companion of gluttons shames his father. One who increases his possessions by usury and extortion gathers, to, gathers it for him who will pity the poor. One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer, is an abomination. I think Isaiah 59 too says something about that. We'll have to check that out. Whoever causes the upright to go astray in an evil way, he himself will fall into his own pit, but the blameless will inherit good. A rich man is wise in his own eyes, but the poor who has understanding searches him out. When the righteous rejoice, there is great glory. But when the wicked arise, men hide themselves. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes him will have mercy. Happy is the man who is always reverent, but he who hardens his heart will fall into calamity. Like a roaring lion and a charging bear is a wicked ruler over poor people. A ruler who lacks understanding is a great oppressor, but he who hates covetousness will prolong his days. A man burdened with bloodshed will flee into a pit, let no one help him. Whoever walks blamelessly will be saved, but he who is perverse in his ways will suddenly fall. He who tills his land will have plenty of bread, but he who follows frivolity, frivolity will have poverty enough. A faithful man will abound with blessing, but he who hastens to be rich will not go unpunished. To show partiality is not good, because for a price of bed, bread a man will transgress. A man with an evil eye hastens after riches and does not consider that poverty will come out upon him. He who rebukes 
a man will find more favor afterward than you flatters with his tongue. Whoever robs his father or his mother and says it is no transgression, the same is a companion to a destroyer. He who is of a proud heart stirs up strife, but he who trusts in the Lord will be, will be prospered. He who trusts in his own heart is a fool, but whoever walks wisely will be delivered. He who gives to the poor will not lack, but he who hides his eyes will have many curses. When the wicked arise, men hide themselves, but when they perish, the righteous increase. Hmm. That's the end of chapter 8, or 28. <clears throat> Whose prayer is an abomination? In verse 9. One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. And that Isaiah 59, let's see if I can find that really quick and see what it had to say. 59, 2, was it? But if your iniquities have separated you from God and your sins have hidden, but your iniquities have separated you from your God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Oh, okay. And I think there was another question. When do the people of a nation rejoice and when do they groan? And that's in, oh, that's the next chapter. Okay, Proverbs 29. He who is often rebuked and hardens his neck will suddenly be destroyed and without remedy. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. When a wicked man rules, the people groan. Whoever loves wisdom makes his father rejoice, but a companion of harlots wastes his wealth. The king establishes the land by justice, but he who receives bribes overthrows it. A man who flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his feet. By transgression, an evil man is snared, but the righteous sings and rejoices. The righteous considers the cause of the poor, but the wicked does not understand such knowledge. Scoffers set a city aflame, but wise men turn away wrath. If a wise man contends with a foolish man, whether the fool rages or laughs, there is no peace. The bloodthirsty hate the blameless, but the upright seek his well-being. A fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. We've all heard people venting. That seems to be a term nowadays. Where I just need to vent, and they just pour out this all kinds of complaints and whatever. So, a wise man holds that back. If a ruler pays attention to lies, all his servants become wicked. The poor man and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gave light to the eyes of both. A king who judges the poor with truth, his throne will be established forever. The rod and rebuke give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases but the righteous will see their fall. Correct your son, and he will give you rest. Yes, he will give delight to your soul. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint, but happy is he who keeps the law. A servant will not be corrected by mere words, for though he understands, he will not respond. Do you see a man hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. He who pampers his servant from childhood will have him as a son in the end. An angry man stirs up strife, and a furious man abounds in transgression. A man's pride will bring him low, but the humble in spirit will retain honor. Whoever is a partner with a thief hates his own life. He swears to tell the truth, but reveals nothing. The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. 
Many seek the ruler's favor, but justice for man comes from the Lord. An unjust man is an abomination to the righteous, and he who is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. Okay, there was that one question. When do a people of the nations rejoice and when do they groan? In verse 2 of 29, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. And when the wicked man rules, the people groan. Okay. All right. Proverbs 30. Okay, now these are not Solomon's Proverbs. These are the words of Agur, the son of Jacob, his utterance. This man declared to Ithiel. Okay, so Proverbs 30. The words of Agur, the son of Jacob, his utterance. This man declared to Ithiel, to Ithiel and Ukul, Ukal, Ukal. Surely I am more stupid than any man, and do not have the understanding of a man. I neither learned wisdom, nor have the knowledge of the Holy One. Who has ascended into heaven, or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name, and what is his son's name, if you know? Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you, and you be found a liar. Two things I request of you, deprive me not before I die. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me, lest I be full and deny you, and say who is the Lord, or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Do not malign a servant in his ma to his master, lest he curse you and you be found guilty. There is a generation that curses its father and does not bless its mother. There is a generation that is pure in its own eyes, yet is not washed from its filthiness. There is a generation, oh how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are like swords, and whose fangs are like knives, to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. The leech has two daughters. Give and give. There are three things that are never satisfied. Four. Never say enough. The grave. The barren womb. The earth that is not satisfied with water. And fire. The fire never says enough. The eye that mocks his father and scorns obedience to his mother. The ravens of the valley will pick it out and the young eagles will eat it. There are three things which are too wonderful for me, yes, four which I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent on a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a virgin. This is the way of an adulterous woman. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done no wickedness. For three things the earth is perturbed, yes, for four, it cannot bear up. For a servant when he reigns, a fool when he is filled with food, a hateful woman when she is married, and a maidservant who succeeds her mistress. There are four things which are little on the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are people not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer. The rock badgers are a feeble folk, yet they make their home in the crags. The locusts have no king, yet they all advance in ranks. The spider skillfully grasps with his hands, and it is in king's palaces. There are three things which are majestic in pace, yes, four which are stately in walk. A lion which is mighty among beasts and does not turn away from any. A greyhound a male goat also, and a king whose troops are with him. If you have been foolish in exalting yourself, or if you have devised evil, put your hand on your mouth, for as the churning of milk, 
produces butter, and wringing the nose produces blood. So the forcing of breath produces strife. Okay, that's 30. I don't think there's any questions. I just noticed currently there's a, a, a TV program being put out called The Chosen. I think in a short while the third season is going to come out. I remember this these words and verses. Just in verse 4. I remember they quote those. Um, Nicodemus, a priest, a Pharisee. It's a Pharisee, not a priest, a Pharisee. To another student Pharisee. And there was some argument over that. I think that was towards the end of the first season or early in the second season. I don't remember which, but they quoted these exact words. And it shocked the young Pharisee. Hmm. Okay, this is the last chapter, Proverbs 31. Now these are the words of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. Okay. What, my son, and what, son of my womb, and what, son of my vows, do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. It is not for kings, O Lemu, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor the princes for intoxicating drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is perishing, and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open your mouth. For the speechless in the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. She also rises well at a still yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. She considers a field and buys it. From her profit, she plants a vineyard, and she girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good, and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff, and her hand holds a spindle. She extends her hand to the poor, yet she reaches out her hands. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestries for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Okay, I think there's one question. How important is a virtuous wife? Verse 10. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above, above rubies. Well, rubies are quite precious. So what do you think of King Solomon and his wisdom? Do you know anyone who is so rich they have everything they could want? I don't know anybody like that. King Solomon had everything. He had land, money, women. Did that make him happy? Find out in the book of Ecclesiastes. He even wrote or had someone write a play called The Song of Solomon about his love affair with a beautiful young girl. 
And yet, after having everything, what did he say is important? Okay, we'll get into that next. I hope you have a great week. This is Thanksgiving week coming up, so if you're busy, I will be busy too, but I hope it's a good time for everybody. See you next time.